Well, folks, today we have some big updates for you with six big stories. We got things like NSO updates. We have an update to Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And no, it's not the fact that it won't have DLC. We actually covered that in a different video. But instead, we have news on the timeline placement coming directly from the director of the game, Fujibayashi himself. Oh, we have more than that, however. We have some news on Metroid Prime 4 releasing next summer, believe it or not. I guess we'll... Find out when we get to that story, and so much more. So, without further ado, we're going to get right into the news after I remind you that we're on our road to 150,000 subscribers. So I would love it if you would go ahead and click that validation button, subscribe to the channel, and you know what? Ringling that dingling to be notified of all future videos, uploads, etc. Heck, we got a Nintendo Prime podcast coming tonight, talking about the upcoming Nintendo Direct and Zelda, so... Stay tuned for that one. <laughs> and our first story today deals with a brand new update to Nintendo Switch Online. Here's that trailer. Come on, editor, drop it. Okay, so we have a bunch of games in here, including three of them that were never released outside of Japan. So that's exciting on one hand. And then again, these are maybe one of the least exciting NSO updates. We have four of the Super Nintendo Kirby's Star Stacker on the Nintendo Entertainment System. We have Joy Mech Fight and Downtown Nekutsu March Super Awesome Field Day. Yes, that is the actual name of a real video game. And then on Game Boy Color, we have Quest for Camelot, which is actually a game I did enjoy as a kid. Now, these are not the most exciting MSO updates, and we're still sort of waiting. Like, when are we getting Mario Party 3 that was previously announced for the N64? I don't know. 1080? You know, snowboarding. Look, it is what it is, folks. Maybe we'll get a big update in this upcoming Nintendo Direct. But for right now, this is the game drop they did for the moment. Are you a fan of F-Zero? Would you like to see F-Zero come back? Well, so would the actual producer of F-Zero GX. In fact, he did a recent interview with Video Game Chronicle talking about how badly he wants this series to come back. He's waiting for Nintendo to, you know... Get the phone and, hey, sir, uh, at zero GX, please. So what the heck did this guy have to say? Who the hell is he? Let's get into it. So the producer of F-Zero GX, Toshihiro Nagoshi, makes a public request for Nintendo to let him make a brand new F-Zero game. In this interview with Video Game Chronicle, he states the following, This is a very nostalgic game title for me, and that was when I learned how to create a high-quality game to satisfy a fan base. I learned a lot, and if there was a chance, I wouldn't mind working on it again. Now, when asked about how his current role as founder of his own studio might affect the likelihood of collaborating with Nintendo on a new F-Zero installment, Nagoshi humorously deferred to Nintendo, emphasizing that it's ultimately their decision. Fans have eagerly awaited a new F-Zero game since the last entry, F-Zero Climax, for the Game Boy Advance. Yes, folks. That's a real game. Uh, that released 19 years ago. Notably in 2021, Nintendo veteran Takaya Inomura, the artist responsible for designing characters and vehicles in the F-Zero series, expressed his belief the series wasn't dead, but was challenging to revive. In a previous interview with Video Game Chronicle earlier in the year, Inomura, who left Nintendo in 2021, suggested that Nintendo could consider outsourcing the new F-Zero title to a third-party developer. He highlighted the success of Donkey Kong Country, which was developed by Rare and published by Nintendo as a testament to the potential of such collaborations. We've also obviously seen Nintendo collaborate with tons of studios over the years for various reasons and different video games. So my thing is obviously you can even look like someone like Sakurai who continued to make the Smash Bros. series even though he runs his own studio. Technically, I don't really know that he has a lot of staff on his studio, but he technically owns a studio and doesn't, you know, is a contract employee of Nintendo. So I don't know. I would like to see F-Zero come back. Of course, it is one of my favorite racing games from my childhood. And yes, is different than Mario Kart. Different enough, I think, to warrant a continued existence. But again, this is up to Nintendo. And it is nice to see the producer of F-Zero GX sort of being like, look, dude, if Nintendo just picks up that phone and hey, man, dude, F-Zero, he'll sign up. He also might just want a little bit of that Nintendo money. I don't know. Nintendo's sort of rolling in the cash right now. Next up, we have an update on the sales for Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Yeah, folks, we have some 
sort of sales data here because it is the number one selling game on the best seller list for video games on Amazon US and Canada. Pretty exciting stuff. Now, what's interesting, of course, is it's not actually ranked number one in the category because that's usually a bunch of gift cards. But as you see on this list here, it actually comes in at number eight. The interesting thing is it's not just behind gift cards. It's also behind the Super Mario Fruit Snacks. Man, I never thought I'd see a Mario game lose to a spinoff snack. Quite interesting. If anything, why not the Oreos? The Mario Oreos are great. But apparently the fruit snacks are all the craze right now. Now it's actually also ahead of the PlayStation 5, which is at the number 11 slot. And the next video game on the list is actually at number 15 in Starfield. Now remember, these are physical copies of games. The Xbox Series X actually saw a bump as well. It jumped from around 36 to the number 12 spot, right behind PlayStation 5, likely on the heels of the Starfield release. So yeah, Super Mario Bros. Wonder is selling very, very well physically. We don't have a lot of pre-order data yet for other places. It's also the number one most wanted game on the Famitsu chart. So when people are voting at Famitsu Magazine on their most wanted game, Super Mario Bros. Wonder is the number one game ahead of Spider-Man 2 and the rest. So guys, look, Super Mario Bros. Wonder is going to sell extremely well. And the real sales data is likely to be much more impressive than any pre-order numbers we get. But you know, it's always a good sign for Nintendo and company and an inventive game like Super Mario Bros. Wonder appears to be to do so well in these sort of pre-sale charts. Now next up we deal with maybe the most complicated topic that you could deal with in the world of Nintendo, the Zelda timeline. Oh boy. Yes, we're going there because you know what? Fujibayashi went there in the exact same interview with Famitsu Magazine where he talked about how there won't be DLC. If you're curious on the DLC stuff, we'll have a link to our video on that down below where we go into greater detail on the fact that there won't be DLC and also some details on the next Zelda game. Again, pretty big news why it's a standalone video, but for those curious about the timeline placement, here is a summary of what he said in the interview. The interviewer asked how the game fits into the existing timeline, given Skyward Sword seemingly depicted the founding of Hyrule. While this game also does, Fujibayashi only reaffirms that the game is set following Breath of the Wild, and that the Zelda series is designed to have a story and world that doesn't fall apart. With the latter assumption in mind, he believes there is room for fans to wonder if there are various other possibilities. He does suggest one possibility and clarifies that he's only speaking on it as a possibility, not a fact, that there may have been a history of destruction before Tears of the Kingdom's story of Hyrule's foundation. He says he does not create things randomly and wants fans to imagine parts of the story that have not been told. So what he's seemingly suggesting is all of the timeline actually maybe happened before, but the world got destroyed for some reason, and this was a new founding of Hyrule. This also could suggest a yet another timeline split that maybe came off an era of destruction as well that maybe happened around the Skyward Sword timeline. Look, there's a lot of stuff that we could speculate here, but it is interesting anytime that we see the actual director of the game chime in and give us a possibility that clearly means that possibility is something that's on his mind while he was making Tears of the Kingdom. So maybe some of you have been spending this last week playing a little unknown game called Sea of Stars. Look, the game has reviewed incredibly. It's at a 90 overall on Metacritic, and you know what? does have a small possibility of being the indie game representative for game of the year. And honestly, at a 90 overall, who can argue that it wouldn't be deserving? Well, we do have a sales update and holy crud, the team is ecstatic. They put out this tweet on Twitter showing that the game has sold 250,000 plus copies. So over 250K copies of this game have been sold. And they noted this was their sales goal for the entire first year of the game. Man, talk about exceeding expectations. They actually originally posted a while ago they sold 100K at launch. Now this game is on everything, right? It's on PlayStation 5 and Xbox and Nintendo and PC. So anywhere that games are played, you can basically play this thing besides your mobile phone. Although, who knows, maybe a mobile port will be available someday. But the point is Sea of Stars is absolutely incredible. Everyone I know playing the game is just smiling the entire time they're playing. It's so fun. It's so in-depth. It's, it's just that next great indie RPG and man oh man I'm really happy for the team behind it so congratulations Sea of Stars and your development team and hopefully on your continued success and who knows maybe your first year sales will cross 1 million and wouldn't that be something crazy now our last story is a rumor coming from 
the man who won't shut up since he got Mario right, Mr. Zippo. So Zippo on his blog recently talked about Metroid Prime 4 and he stated quite emphatically in the title that it is set for a summer 2024 release, which those of you that pay attention to all of my content, including the podcast, would know I've been saying for a while that I sort of expect it to come out next summer, but that was just a prediction. Here he's claiming he has direct knowledge. Let's see what he had to say on the matter. So, denizens of the galaxy, your wait will soon be over. For years, there were four mysterious titles for the Switch that we had to wait ages to get updates on. The first was Bayonetta 3, and the second was Tears of the Kingdom. The third was Pikmin 4, and the fourth, lastly, was Metroid Prime 4. We all know the story of what happened there, but now it appears as light is at the end of the tunnel. The game has had a long development cycle, about five years now, and things are finally starting to wrap up. Close to five years, either way. Which is why I've finally gotten word that the game will release in the summer of next year, which will make it the last quote-unquote major title for the Switch, ahead of the release of Nintendo's next console in the second half of next year. Additionally, I've heard that internally, Nintendo has been very cautious about showing off the game until it was in a near complete state. They employed this same strategy with Pikmin 4 last year and I think it worked out pretty well. When Nintendo finally shows the game off, it will come with a date. The Switch is ending with a bang and I'm here for it. Be patient, bounty hunters. The wait is almost over. More soon. See you next mission. Well, folks, we'll see what happens. There's supposedly a Nintendo Direct next week, and maybe it'll be there. If it's closer release to timing thing, it could be a February Direct. I don't know. Uh, but I know this. One of my personal predictions is we will see Metroid Prime 4 in this next Direct. And if he's correct, and I'm correct, again, I'm just making a prediction. I don't actually know. Uh, let's say it is shown off, then it apparently will have a date. So I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, folks. I'm just really excited to see what Metro Prime 4 actually is. There's been a lot of juicy rumors around it. So what's next? That is a question I leave for you guys to ponder at the end of today's Prime News. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's been a lot of fun today. We've had so many juicy stories. I can't wait to get into tomorrow. I've already got preliminary research going into tomorrow's episode. It's also going to be a really great one. You guys are awesome. Be sure you tune in tonight for our Nintendo Prime podcast. we got Jake Randall coming on. we got Andres Restart coming back. Flam. It's going to be a packed show as we talk about Zelda. We talk about... Well, all of that Nintendo Direct goodness and actually make some preliminary predictions because you know what? If there is a Direct next week, chances are it'll be before our next episode of the podcast. So if we're going to make predictions, this is the time to do it. And you know what? We'll catch you guys on the next video. Yeah.